Hello, everyone. Um, I took a shower, so that's why my hair is a little wet. That's not the sweat. It could have been this or sweat. Um, so this is what you are getting. Fresh out of the shower. That's my new TikTok dance. Okay, let's find... Elise and get this party started. Hey, Cassandra. Hey, Jake Owen. What's up? Um, yeah, you know, uh, when you, when you, uh, want to make Alabama Hannah your next single, Jake, um, I know a girl who can be in the music video. Even though it's I, it's catchy. I can't help it. Jake, we're talking about Jesus on this though. Um. Okay. Where are you, Elise? Oh, there you are. There's a bunch of you. Carrie. Hey, Carrie. What's up, Chelsea? I'm saying hey to people. I love that. Hi. Hey, Audrey Pratt. Hey, Christine. Hey, Elise. Hey, Hannah. Look at you showering, being clean. I know. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I know. Um, I was going to say, do you have your duct tape? No, but I'm putting my duct tape, tape on. Hi, Sam. Now. Um, I want to be in a music video about Alabama, Hannah. Wouldn't that be so great? I have what a whole resume Australian on my TikTok. Uh, <laughs> you what? I said I have a whole resume on my TikTok about yeah, my. Music. No, no, you are. Uh, be you one know. of those hot, those hot dancers, the hot girl dancers. Yeah, dude, you did one today, right? You were in a quiet. That's outfit. my quarantine story for the day. I have. I can go in a full snowsuit and make a TikTok, and that's what I did because. My friend, my new friend, who used to be my enemy, Matt James. Um, love that. But we love Matt. Sorry, I have to. I get. We love Matt, don't we? We have to do this. We love Matt so much. Wait, wait, wait where'd you get a snow? Uh, what'd you say, a snowsuit? I can't cover this. Um, no, it's just this sweatsuit. But I just, I, I use effects to make it look more white. So proud of you. Well, oh, that's just... covering. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to be honest about why I have to do this. Okay, you want to tell them? Yep. Yeah. We're so, just getting right out of the gate. You're just going to... I'm just going to be very honest. So, I... This is one of my struggles, is watching. There's a number that goes up and down, up and down of you guys watching. And I have had moments of when people are really fascinated with my life, where, you know, I've seen these crazy numbers, and I've seen... Love numbers, but, like, I don't want it to be about how many of you are watching. Like, I just want to, like, share my heart. So, I have to cover up the number um, so that it doesn't matter if there's two of you on here or 12,000 of you on here. It doesn't matter. Well, there's matter. definitely two people on here. There's you and me. So well, okay. Three. <laughs> th exactly right. Three of us. That's why we freaking love you, though, because you tell people. Oh, now I'm zooming in on my <laughs> You are just killing it right now, aren't you? I oh. love that. No, but I feel like it's like, I, I feel like I can be pretty confident about some things, but there yeah. are some things that yeah, I have to protect myself from that. I, um, I agree. agree. So I use duct tape or whatever type of tape, masking tape. What is this tape called? The blue tape? Painter's tape. Sure. To cover it up. Love that. Yeah. So I can just See? be present. And now you can just be with us and you don't have to worry about the people that are being, being, Instagram life hoppers, you know? How dare you? It's okay. I've How been dare Instagram you hop off our life. I'm kidding. Um, so you did your TikTok thing today. What else did you do? Um, I, I, I sat on, I have this new poof in my room, like a little poof ball. And I just Love sat that. on my poof ball and just stared at myself for a second. And not in a, um, I just noticed I was doing that. And not in a way of like checking myself out, just like passing time. Thank you. I was counting the threads on my pillow today. I, I caught myself doing it. I didn't even realize I was doing it. And so it's not that I didn't have stuff to do, but it's like in quarantine world, 
the things that don't matter at all are suddenly the things that you spend all your time doing. And it's just, that's life now. I've also realized that, um, well, I've always known this about myself. I have a lot to do, but mm -hmm. I put stuff off and it's very, oh, yeah. like, like so bad during this time. I'm like, yeah, Ugh, work. The oh, things you actually want... have to do, you don't even want to do. I decided today I haven't answered emails. So if you have sent me an email and I haven't answered it, I'm very sorry. But I decided today that instead of doing things, I wanted to make hot cross buns and become a chef. And I've never made hot cross buns, nor actually should I make hot cross buns, to be honest with you. But off I went and got the ingredients. And I can't wait to see them. Shout out to my girl Charlene at Ralph's hooked a sister up and then um I'm gonna try and make hot cross buns because what else are you meant to do apart from work and no one wants to do that I mean it's and it's Easter Easter you can make a hot cross bun Hannah I also was thinking today I don't know mm -hmm. if you have figured it out do you know what you're wearing on Easter Sunday because it's like a really big deal it's a big fashion day in church you know what I mean People oh um, you know, usually, you know, it's like your Sunday's best, best, your best Sunday's best is Easter. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, I have, um, do quarantine rules apply to Easter Sunday? I think, right. Maybe sure. I should wear a pastel sweatsuit. Maybe that's what, that's what I was thinking. I got this really bright colored green sweatsuit. Ooh. It's bright. Love that. Easter egg. So I'm going to be a walking Easter egg on Sunday. I might wear our Disney um, onesie then and dress up as Mickey Mouse. I, I, what am I treating Easter like Halloween for? <laughs> I'm going to dress up as Mickey Mouse on Easter. <laughs> well, you can. You can because if that's well, not what you want to do. Also, my mom is still, um, we're having to have, me and my brother are going to have an Easter egg hunt still. You are because, not. I'm, maybe yes, I should have one with myself, but I'd have to hide them in the inger set. You don't know time. where they are. <laughs> I just like throw them outside my door and then, and then I go look for them. <laughs> oh, that's sounded so sad. Please do that. No, I'm not. I, I close my eyes, throw them, but they'll be in the pool and then my landlord oh, is mad. Oh, that's smart. Close your eyes. Okay, maybe. Or blindfold. Blindfold. <laughs> blindfold. <laughs> no, I I'm like, oh my gosh. Blindfold yourself and throw maybe them out. That. And then like, it's like, it's, yeah, that, there you go. But that's not going to work because I'm not going to do that and I'm just going to eat the Easter eggs. So let's be honest. Okay. Nobody is having an Easter egg hunt. But I love that you're doing that. Um, so then Easter egg outfit. I'm um, Easter egg. Easter outfits are still on. It's going to be great. You did a workout. Things are good. It's Wednesday. For those who didn't know, today's Wednesday. I don't know who needs to hear that. But today's Wednesday. You're welcome. Han. Yes. You want to do the things? Which things? Oh, the thing thing. Oh my gosh, my nails and my hat match. It's not about that, but isn't oh, it? Oh, like the thing that we're here for? Yeah, like, I don't know, like a, like the devotional thing. Oh, Someone yeah. said, Ozzy, 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 oi, oi, oi. Um, let's do it. So today we put up, we are talking about Matthew chapter 26. It's Easter Wednesday or Wednesday of Easter week. Whichever one doesn't offend you, then that's the one it is. And on the Wednesday, the Wednesday, we actually, first of all, I had so much fun last night. I think last night was my favorite. My of favorite. Like, with your fake plant moment. That was like. That just, was the Lord. <laughs> it was the Lord with a T on the end. I almost took a lap. Um, I loved it. But I'm so excited about tonight because I was actually reading it just before and got something brand new from it as well. So it's basically this story. If you are new joining us every night, we're kind of chatting about what was happening in the Easter week, what was happening literally thousands of years ago on the very week of that we celebrate Easter, so at Wednesday. And on the Wednesday, Jesus um, was having dinner with his boys, and this woman came in, and they say it was Mary, and there's two different types of Mary in the Bible. There is mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene, and then Mary as in the sister of Martha. So Mary Magdalene had this sketch background, um, I think she was a prostitute that said a bunch of stuff about her. And she also anointed Jesus, like came with perfume. But then this Mary is not that. This is the Mary from Mary and Martha, the sisters that were really close with Jesus. If you know um, stuff about the Bible, they were, um, their brother, his name was Lazarus. And he was the one that got sick and died. And Jesus went to their house. 
and um, he raised Lazarus from the dead. Another time also, Mary was kind of like the, um, she was like the favorite almost, but not really. Martha was the one when Jesus came over for like a dinner party, she was cooking, she was doing the five course meal, she sat at the table and Mary has been the entertainment. I appreciate Mary because I'm a Mary. I am a I'm less going to like put the, all the food in the oven and I'm going like, to like make all the yummy noises and, um, yeah. what I, do I, do I don't want to cook and clean. Exactly. You literally, you literally just said that last night. That's very, very true. So, um, so then we, we have them. And so this is that story. So Mary comes in and in this story, if you read it this morning, she comes with a bottle of perfume and she anoints Jesus. And the guys at the table are like, who's this psycho walking in? Super critical. Facebook mom's galore. And they um, basically mock her and like tell her, you shouldn't have, did they criticize her? This girl's just coming in trying to love on Jesus. And they criticize her. And Jesus stops them and he says, hey, you guys, stop. Th this woman has done what was right. She's done the beautiful thing. And so again, it can kind of be a confusing story. Why is this woman coming? What's with the perfume? Why did it cost so much money? All of this stuff. And yet the thing I love about this story, what's that? Jesus? Is that you? Is that you, Lord? My phone is blowing up right now. Oh. Who and now it? my phone. I'm trying to turn off. We love that. Okay, continue. Okay. So that's basically the story. So you read it. A lot of the girls and guys that are joining us this week read it. And yes, there is an incredible song called Alabaster Box, if people haven't heard it, by one of, I think it's Cece Winans. It tells a story of this woman. And I always say this, right? We see the Bible, we see these characters, these heroes, and... Um, I love taking these biblical heroes and just making them human because they're real, normal people. And so this woman, we asked today, to me, the most interesting thing is you've got Mary, right? And she has come to Jesus with, at the time, I mean, if someone comes with perfume now, perfume on me, don't do that. Are you back? Yes, my... We got you. There's something going on in here. My, I don't know how to turn this... Ah. Okay, I'm good. Do you want to put it on? Do you want, do you want to step? We good? You can fix it. How? I don't know. Don't ask me. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. See, okay. I'm, Are we good? I'm, having, I'm just having issues. Okay. Yes. We're just going to be good. Aren't we all having We're issues? We're going to pretend like it. Hey. Uh-oh. Where did she go? Oh. oh. What are Do you hearing? this? Yes. <laughs> are you wait? Are you on your Jesus. phone or on your? No, I'm on my phone, but my computer is make is now playing music. Just close your computer. Around and I'm on Woo! Uh, <laughs> well, there's a. What is happening? That was the weirdest. <laughs> Yo, what was happening? I don't know how that happened. That's I'm telling you, Jesus. Okay. Okay. So we're just gonna pretend like that didn't happen, y'all. Um, heard a little announcement if you are listening, but whatever. Um, okay. No, no oh, one yeah. heard anything. It's totally fine. Let's yeah. not draw attention to whatever was being. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. So where were we? I don't even. Mary, Jesus, Mary, we're talking about Mary. Okay. Oh, yes. So this is like this was back in the day something you like you did and it was a year's wages so this wasn't like like we said today, this is not like axe body spray this is not the stuff that you spray to cover up another smell this was a yeah. way to bring value and again her worship of someone and so to me i kind of the thing we were talking about han was the fact that i think so many times we come and we think we're doing the right thing. We want to come and like talk about God, worship God, do something for God that is of value to us. And suddenly you've got haters in the room that look at what you try and do and all they want to do is criticize it. 
Mm-hmm. We don't have to look any further than an Instagram live like this to know and be very aware that as soon as you want to step out and do something, you're going to have people that want to in their own so many words come to mind that I won't use, uh, want to pull somebody else down for worshiping God or following their own dream even. Yeah. Yeah. Or just like not understanding, like sometimes the Lord asks you to do things. Well, I think talk about Esther all the time. Like we love that, you know, like the way that the Lord has called you to worship him or to honor him may look really different and also not be like people can't understand it. And even the people who understand Jesus, like don't understand it or they think they do. I don't know. And then, then they're the most critical sometimes because it does, you don't worship the same way they do. Yep. That's exactly right. And I think that here's the thing that's interesting to me. A lot of scholars say that the first person to denounce her devotion was actually Judas. And if you know um, anything, and if you don't, Jesus was betrayed by one of his disciples. He had 12 disciples and one of them, his name was Judas, was actually the betrayer. And so it's so interesting to me that the, the scholars say that the first one to say, Mary, you shouldn't have done that and criticize her was the very one that was actually in that moment, the furthest thing away from Jesus. And I just wonder if the most the more critical we are, we're actually calling ourselves out that the further we are from Jesus. And so I think our criticism sometimes says a lot more about us than our imperfect worship or even some of the things we do. I mean, Mary was right to do what she did, but I know there have been times I've done stuff that um, hasn't been with the right motive or like I've done my best, but it's not how I wanted it to turn out. I don't need someone to come up and criticize me over something that I know I could have done better at. And yet to me, the interesting thing is that often the people with the loudest criticisms are the one with the quietest prayer life. You know, what what I've thought of, because this um, has happened to me where um, people, well, I get, I've gotten so many DMs about this, but it's like, you should not, anyway, people will be like, <laughs> I'm trying to be your brother and sister in Christ right now. And I'm about to point out all the things that you've done wrong. Yep. And there are some times where... You, yes, we are all like, that's not your close circle that can like be like, Hey, what's up? Like, yeah, if you're at, like, if you're spending all your time criticizing other people and what they're doing, that's a lot of time that you could have been uplifting people and loving people and therefore yeah. worshiping. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that is so true and does show a lot about your your heart if you're constantly criticizing people um yeah because most of the time we kind of know when we're doing we're a little off absolutely it's it's, It's, someone actually someone just said in the comments they said i wonder if the other disciples were embarrassed by mary's exuberance and i think oftentimes sometimes we're critical because deep down we're just jealous and actually we feel convicted and we feel bad that that person is doing more with their platform or oops my bad is doing more with their what they have than somebody else and actually Mm -hmm. really our criticism can be sometimes a sign of our own insecurity yes that was preaching right there I feel like it really was I mean I mean I almost amen myself to be honest like that was (laughs) that was pretty good like amen and like I've definitely been on the receiving side of that but I've also I mean if we were all being honest there's probably we've all done it even if it's like just a little bit internally, you're like, hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's really because you're like, dang. Oh, it, oh, I, we were talking uh, like being extra. Yes. Like that, like, like girl, you said extra, but like I want to be extra with God. Yeah. But but and that's okay. But I think sometimes when people see people doing the most or, um, sh- you know, being that is when people are. are turned off and it's even I don't know like yes I get that but at the same time like when it comes to Jesus like go for it but it shouldn't be it shouldn't be just for what what other for looks it's exactly that's when people don't understand it the most and I think it's not for that uh, no absolutely I think you kind of nailed it when you said it's not that um it's not that accountability is bad it's not that um, I don't allow anyone to speak into my life to be like, uh, honestly, last I have night, very... think about our, we had a phone call last night and you were 
keeping me accountable about some stuff or, you know, thoughts or yeah. questioning, like, that's good. Like, you that's need really people good in your life. But here's the crazy thing. You and I have a relationship and you've allowed me to have that place in your life. It's a very mm -hmm. different thing. I remember when I went through, um, just use my own personal example. You know, it's a really interesting thing to be a pastor in church and have the word divorce in your story. And for people that don't know the story to have people share their opinion when you haven't asked for it and they have no idea what the process has looked like. And so I have been my own, um, I've had my own situations of people wanting to give unsolicited advice um, and criticism in the name of God. I know I specifically remember one message I was reading once, an email that came through about how could I be preaching when I was whatever, I don't know, whatever. And I remember as I was reading it, I so clearly heard God speak to me, not audibly. I've never heard the audible voice of God, but for me, it's this knowing in my heart that just kind of stops me in my tracks. And I felt like he said, Elise, that is not me. Do not listen to that. And so I was like, all right, cool. And mm -hmm. I kind of knew it anyway. But the interesting thing I found out about this verse, right, as I was reading it just before, I realized something new because there's one thing to talk about the DMs or people sliding in. And if you haven't listened to that song that we were talking about today, People by Jonathan McReynolds, it will like, oh my gosh, it is so about that. Mm -hmm. But I read the story again and it was the disciples that were saying this about Mary. It wasn't the Pharisees. It wasn't the people that were just super religious and didn't know them. And the disciples were with Jesus when he was with Mary both times before when he raised Lazarus from the dead, their brother. So imagine that celebration. That was like more than a birthday party. They were more than celebrating. And then they were with him at the dinner parties where Mary was sitting in the same living room as them listening to Jesus. So this wasn't somebody that was far away and didn't know you and that you could just kind of shrug off as a stranger. What do you do in situations where you're following your dream or you're trying to worship Jesus and it is the right thing but suddenly you have people looking on that should have your back that feel more like they are wanting to stab you in, in the back. And it's not that you're not doing something that would be considered sin or against, or like against what God's saying or anything like that. You're actually doing a good thing, but what do you do when you're trying to follow your dream and the haters of the people that, 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 you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm asking. <laughs> I understand that. I can remember yes. during the Bachelorette. I mean, because mm -hmm. that's just like when I think about like criticism. Sure. Like no, that was that's it's where it heightened for sure. Yeah, and so I'm from a smaller town here in Alabama, and uh, I I don't really use my Facebook, but I got on my Facebook after like one of the episodes that kind of people were like making judgments about me or whatever. And there was a, um, a post that was going around that was basically saying that like I gave it truly said, I gave Christians a bad name. That's like what it said. And I saw people from my hometown that when I'm up here doing great, like I knew like had been to their house, had relationships with, resharing it and reposting it and it was so that feeling of like oh my god like you don't even know it was really happening like you don't have my like yeah don't have stabs me in more in the back than had my back of like you don't know the full story you don't know my heart mm. like you obviously don't know my heart like it, that was that was a really hard moment for me because I can take like random people trolls yeah. on the internet because like that is I, I would if I didn't then I would not be okay. have survived this long yeah, yeah I would not have survived truly but when you see people that you know and you yeah. had encounters with that's the hardest yeah. and for her to be able to like still continue on extravagant extravagantly worshiping the way that the Lord like loved and, and honored her for doing that. Like that is really cool because I think that takes a really strong person and strong in your faith to continue going when people just don't understand. Absolutely. And it's that 
I just realized as you were talking, because I literally was asking the question of like, wait, what do you, what do you, what do you do? <laughs> but I think that, I think you totally answered my question. Cause here's the thing is that it's like, um, when we don't defend ourselves, we allow God to defend us. And I mm-hmm. think the most amazing thing, one of the most amazing things about you is that you stayed silent. A lot of people don't know the stories that I would know or that even that one right there of people that I want, I can't to, you, you don't want me to, but we've, we've walked through some of those things of people that should have been saying and encouraging and having your back. But I think that God always elevates the humble and he was, he'll always humble the people that want to criticize and elevate themselves. And so it says here, so this woman stayed quiet. She stayed where she was. She didn't actually pay attention to the people that were criticizing her, whether she knew them or not. And it says, Jesus aware of the malice of their remark said to them, why are you bothering this woman? She has done a good thing to me. You'll not always have me um, with you. And I assure you, and I most solemnly say to you, wherever this gospel of salvation is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told in memory of her for her act of love and devotion. I think when we stop trying to defend ourselves, God will label it in public that it was devotion. That when we try to say, no, 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 and defend ourselves and give the reason why we did that and tell every single hater why they're wrong, the ones we know, the ones we don't know. And we just continue to do what God's asked us to do. When we continue to follow the dreams that God has put in our heart, I believe that he will silence those people that are spitting venom at us. And he will let the people, he will let the world know that what you said is the thing he has blessed. And the crazy thing is they just won't be there to be able to enjoy it with you. They'll have to watch along with the rest of the world. I'm preaching to myself. (laughs) (laughs) But I think we always have those days where it's like, why can't these people just see that I'm really wanting to all them? I know I'm not perfect. I just want to do what God says. And I just want to do these things and I just want to follow these dreams that he's put in my heart and people keep saying they're not from God and I think that you just have to take step by step and trust that God is the one that will make sure other people know he quieted them and that was his disciples that was his boys Mm -hmm. oh my god how great is that when Jesus quiets his boys for you you know what I mean (laughs) the best When a guy quiets his friends for you, honors you in front of them. No, like that's like the best feeling ever. Mm -hmm. Yep. When a guy (laughs) stands up for you in front of his boys, it's like, I'm sorry, what? What? Do you want to like. (laughs) That giggle. That's what you do. (laughs) Do (laughs) What's that, Jesus? Uh. So. I I'm mean, getting married. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> not to Jesus, but like <laughs> to the boy that I mean, stands up for you. No, I get it. I get it. I get yeah. it. I get it. I get it. She yeah. wasn't ready. Um, <laughs> but that's what I think. And I think that I have in this last year or so, I feel like this is what God's been teaching me because I am someone that will fight for what I believe in. And there have been so many times God has asked me to let go of things that were good things. Um, but needing to make margin for other stuff he's bringing along and people didn't understand and criticized and behind my back and really painful stuff, you know? And so I think that when you stay silent, God acts on your behalf. And the crazy thing is it was immediate. He literally stopped them mid sentence. He won't let it go along. He won't let it go on for a long time. So, and maybe like I try to, like, and maybe if he does let it go on longer, it's to learn something through that or for Every, you to always her. like just cause I know there's been times where I'm like, Oh, okay. I'm not saying anything. Like I can, there's so many times where I'll get like, <laughs> I'll get like all these mean messages and I'll be like, Oh, I just want to fire back. But I'm like, I'm not going to do anything. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do it. But like, okay. I'm okay. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, but then it was like, I had to learn something through that, that, that time too and it's always like oh okay that makes sense after it's always like that oh I understand why that didn't happen great (laughs) my mom always taught me hurt people hurt people (laughs) 
sometimes I'll write back to that people like that when people like write stuff, whether it's on like the Oasis page or mine and I'll just write back, hurt people, hurt people. And I know that's not very mature of me because it's kind of passive aggressive, but it, yeah, every now and then you just gotta, you know. Yeah, sometimes you just can't control it. I've done it, I've done it a few times. You have? Just been yeah. over it? I just can't. Yeah, when people were saying that I wasn't a Christian, that was really, that was really upsetting me. Um, and that's what's so crazy is that they're the ones that will have to watch what God does through you now. They don't get to enjoy it. And that's sad for them. Yeah. But because yeah. God never wastes seasons like that. So um, he never wastes seasons, even those that are so painful. And it's, it's the most painful seasons that I've been through and the most silent that I've had to be that have given me the strength and the mm -hmm. authority to say the things I say now. And I'm still learning every, I mean, Jeez, I'm like so freaking so still learning, you know. So oh, I mean, I have to hold back every single day. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Some people are crazy. Mm -hmm. I just want to be like, let me live my life. And then you know what's crazy? The that last thing as well is that sometimes that crazy person is us, and I think that's where we find the compassion. Yes. Jonathan McGrenell says in that yes. song, "People yes. deliver me from people." And then deliver people from me as well when it's me and it's my turn. And the amount of times I've been the critical one, the amount of times that I've been the one that's jealous and the one that is mm -hmm. like saying stuff out of hurt. The reason that I can let go of stuff is because I know what God has let go of from, from mm -hmm. me. And the Bible Absolutely. literally says to the extent that you judge, you'll be judged. And I'm like, I'm good. Like I've got no rocks to throw mainly because I probably have none left from when I used to throw them, but also because <laughs> I know me, I know how like, Oh gosh, what a knucklehead I can be. And like, I, this is the, what I, what God's done in my life is an absolute testament to he'll freaking use anyone, you know? <laughs> Same. Yep. So that I think like if someone is really can't let go of something, taking that to God and saying like, Asking God to remind you of the things that he has saved you from. Yeah. And that he's let go of on your behalf. Because I think that sometimes God is saying, all right, if you want me to judge that person, then I've got to judge you for this too. Yeah. How do you, so I'm like, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. You know, but that's all I have to say. Do you have anything else to say? No, I mean, the only thing I'm going to say is closing of, if there's like something, I think what I got from this is like, if there's something that you feel like the Lord has placed or like a dream that he's placed in your heart or uh, a decision that you know, like people won't understand, but like you have to do, do it. Like, but pray about it. Pray about, is this really coming from the Lord? And sometimes it will not make sense. There's things in the like that I'm like, I do not know why this has happened or why I'm supposed to go do this or go here or do this. But I know like it's been placed in my heart for a reason, but then the other critical is yeah. the critical that makes you start second guessing it. Like that the crit criticism does not come from the Lord. Like that's of the enemy. He is, compassionate like the words that describe jesus is not is not critical it's compassionate yeah. it is yeah. um who will put like a discerning like you'll have a dis you'll have discernment the closer you are to jesus but like being critical doubt those are not of the lord that is yes. of satan and yeah. um and if you ever feel like that like just continue keep going yeah, it's Julian, my pastor, well, your pastor too, always yeah. says, um, he tells this story of like when people think about Jesus as this critical, like shaming person, then you haven't realized him as father. Yeah. And a lot of people say like, you can only find God through Jesus. Well, the truth is like, God, you can find God anywhere. Like shop, you can get a vibe and go in, on the mountain and hike. Well, you can't really right now, but like when you can, you can find God in nature and he created it or whatever God is in, you can find him in. There's only one way to get to, um, to find the father and that's through Jesus. And so the father is what God's trying to show you. And so he always tells this story about like, if he lost his daughter, Bailey, 
And when he loses her and not when, no, he's not like always losing his daughter, but like if he was to lose Bailey in the mall and he was to lose her and like realize that for 20 seconds and then see her at a store, he would like grab her hands. And he said, I would say to her, Bailey, where did you go? And I would discipline her there because I, but it's because he loves her. Every good parent would do that. But if Bailey had been missing for 20 years and suddenly she comes home, the first thing he's going to say to her is not, what he said to her if she was gone for 20 seconds. 20 years being away from God and 20 seconds is a very different response because the proximity is different. Mm -hmm. And so if you're ever feeling shame or guilt and you think it's from God, it is not from God. Conviction, mm -hmm. truth, honesty, that is all from God. But the word says that God is the father and he disciplines those he loves. Discipline is out of love. So mm -hmm. when you feel that weight of that, when you feel shame that is not of god like goodness gracious and then if you are just figuring this walk out with god and you've not really even walked into it you kind of are interested please know if you feel shame or guilt that is for sure yeah not from not from god so that'd be the last thing i say all right we need to pray and finish up because the okay. people have the things to do all right you want to pray i can pray yeah i can absolutely pray i played last night it's your turn Okay, okay, what am I praying I can about? pray. I can pray if you want me to pray. Oh, I'll pray. I'll pray. Okay, I love that. So okay, we've said so every night we're going to pray for someone being affected by this horrible virus. So tonight, we are going to pray for those that um, this season has either they've lost their job or their job has gotten harder because you're having to readjust how you, you do things. Um, that is always hard. I mean, heck, I can't even figure out how to turn my computer off right now. I can't imagine. Do you remember when that happened? What the heck? I, I, I'm still, like, trying to – I don't know what happened. It was weird. But, um, but yes. I just can't imagine. It's like you're, you're trying to learn – and then you're having your, if you have kids, like your kids are at home and you're trying to teach them teachers, like I feel for you um, and I'm praying for you. So just anybody that yeah. during this time, like your work has gotten a lot harder and a lot heavier. Um, to maybe There's just teachers do. in the comments too, that thank yeah. you so much for all you're doing. All the yeah, teachers, I, all the people. Um, I've seen firsthand how hard it is for a teacher right now. So. Um, yeah. We are praying for, for everyone, though, that, that's having to deal with that. So yeah. we'll pray now. Let's do it. Dear Lord, thank you so much for um, just the opportunity that you have given Elise and I to be able to pray for all those that are hurting, um, who are growing, and who are interested in reaching out for you, Lord. Um, I pray that. Uh, you would just put a sense of peace over everyone that is listening to this prayer. Um, Lord, there are so many distractions that even I have fallen tempted um, by. But Lord, I just pray that in this moment that we just feel your love and know that you, you have us in the palm of your hand, that you put desires in our hearts for a reason. And Lord, no matter um, who criticizes that or questions, Lord, that we know that, that you have plans for us that are so bigger than we could even imagine and that we can just extrav extravagantly um, pursue you with our heart so that you can use our life and, and bless it, Lord. Um, Lord, I just pray for all those that are um, in a new season in their jobs, Lord, maybe they don't have a job right now and are having financial fears that they're just uncertain of how we're going to get through this, Lord, that you would just put that wave of peace over them right now, Lord. Um, I pray for those that are stressed because you know, the workload looks harder and it's different and learning can be difficult when you're trying to teach. Um, so I just pray for all those teachers and different um, people in the workplace that are having to learn how to work from home in a way that they've never yeah. had before. Lord, I just pray that you give them um, perseverance to just get through each day and um, 
to just look to you when it all becomes too much, Lord, for that peace and that certainty that it's all going to be okay. And we're all um, going to get through it together, Lord. I just thank you so much for the blessings that, um, that we, those little blessings we see throughout the madness every day, Lord. And we love you and we thank you. Um, in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. We love it. Yay. We love each other. Love this it. This is great. Well, we love you, fam. Everyone joining, doing the we things. I guess we'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. I'll be here. Let me. I'll be here. I'll try and wash my hair before then. That'd be great. That's a good step. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to do it again. Who knows? I can't give any promises. What? I know. Two days in a row. Well, <laughs> We're asking a lot. Okay, I we'll love see. you. I love you. Bye. Bye, guys.